Beyonce's new album is breaking records. Spotify says that Cowboy Carter is the most streamed album in a single day so far this year. There are more than two dozen tracks on the album. Sweet Honey Bucket, which you heard a little bit of there, is one of my favorites. Uh, when you hear the whole song, it just lays out the mixes of influences on Cowboy Carter. Beyonce said this isn't a country album. It is a Beyonce album. This embraces the, the black roots of country music and the black women leading country's new generation. So I have here two great guests to talk uh, with us from Nashville. Holly G is the founder of the Black Opry and country singer songwriter Tierra Kennedy is here. She is on two songs on Cowboy Carter. Ladies, welcome to you both. Tierra, let me start with you with a congratulations. I know it's been, you know, the, the butterflies of keeping the secret after you saw the track list. Uh, how do you feel this morning? <laughs> oh my gosh, honestly, I'm still like trying to process everything. <laughs> um, I have been crying since yesterday. Um, it's just been a whirlwind and I'm, I'm really honored to be a part of this album. I mean, I love Beyonce and I'm always dreamed of you know, getting to work with her, but I never imagined that it would happen in this way. So it's really special. You're on Blackbird and Tyrant. Let's play a little of uh, Blackbird now. You were only waiting for this moment to be free. Blackbird. You're on with Beyonce and three other black women in country. What what is the feeling of of the message of that song between the five of you? Mm, it's really special. Um, you know, I, I honestly didn't know the, the importance of that song until after we recorded it. Um, and so it just made it that more special. Um, and all of us girls, we were texting this morning just about how how fun it's been and, and how cool it is that we get to experience this together. Um, this is such an important song and I'm so thankful to Beyonce for including us. Um, and I think that it's spreading such a, a special message to the world and hopefully to young girls that want to get into country music one day. Yeah, Paul McCartney wrote that song back in the 60s for the Beatles um, and he wrote it not about a black bird but a black woman in the context of the civil rights uh, movement, and then Beyonce now has a cover of it. Uh, Holly, let me come to you. I learned from you uh, when we spoke a year ago about uh, Tracy Chapman and Fast Car that uh, country music is one of the, the remaining genres in which radio play rules. And uh, we learned from a, a study of, from song data, track airplay between 2002 and 2020, 11,484 songs played in those 19 years uh, songs by black women, three black women artists had songs in that 11,484. How much does this album change country music and country radio? Um, I think that's still left to be decided as far as uh, what the radio programmers decide to do. I spoke to uh, Dr. Jada Watson yesterday who pulls this data and she's the one who uh, kind of holds the industry accountable in that way. And since those two songs has, have dropped, there have been no other black women that have been added to the country radio programming. Um, and so so we're still yet to see what impact that will make. So, uh, But I, I do want to say congratulations to you. I'm a big fan of yours, and it's great to see you on this album. Mm. Thank you. So uh, if, if they're not adding any other black women to country radio, and clearly we know now the names of at least four others who could be uh, on, on country radio, um, there's Mickey Guyton as well. I mean, there are others who, who perform. Is this potentially their opportunity to say, here's Beyonce, see, we do include black women, and then that is where it ends? Unfortunately, I think that's what's happening. I, I was at a country radio seminar a couple weeks ago, and that was a vibe. Everybody was uh, patting themselves on the back for embracing Beyonce. Um, and so I think in their minds, the work is kind of done, um, which just leads us to pivot in a different direction. I think that um, the, the blessing of Beyonce in this moment is that the beehive is very strong. Um, and they have already begun to show interest in these artists and try to figure out ways to support them. 
And so I think we have a huge opportunity here to build an alternative to the mainstream radio. Yeah, since uh, uh, Texas Hold'em was released, uh, the streams immediately after that was released for Raina Roberts, for Tanner Adele, went up dramatically uh, in the days after uh, that one track hit. So yes, the love is being spread around. Kay Michelle as well, waiting for her country album to be released. Holly G, Tierra Kennedy, thank you to you both. And Tierra has some new music of her own coming out soon. I Ain't a Cowgirl on April 26th. So watch out for that. I'm joined now by Alice Randall, award-winning songwriter and author of My Black Country, a journey through country music's black past, present, and future. What a great honor, Alice, to talk to you. You are indeed a groundbreaker. I mean, some folks may not know, or perhaps they do remember, that uh, you are behind uh, a major hit, X's and O's, for Trisha Yearwood, making you the first black songwriter with a number one country music song. And, I mean, you're, you are you have reached deep into country music in a lot of different ways, also working with uh, Johnny Cash. So how excited are you about uh, Beyonce's Cowboy Carter album? I am absolutely thrilled. I've been in this business for 41 years. Wow. And this is the most important weekend in, that I have experienced in the history of country music. Oh, my gosh. Why do Period. you put it that way? Why? Period. Why do you put it that way? That's giant. When I arrived here 41 years ago, uh, Charlie Pride had already been to the top of the charts, I think, 29 times in my 41 years. No black woman has ever been to the top of the country charts. And now she's not just at the top of the charts of these new charts. She's holding all the spaces. <laughs> this is an extraordinary revelation for the genre. And it's a good news for America. Oh, it really is in so many ways. I mean, you, you talk about, you know, Charlie... Charlie Pride, I mean, you know, blazing a, a trail like no one else. And recently you've got country music stars Kane Brown, Jimmy Allen, uh, Mickey Guyton. Uh, they are two, uh, you know, meteoric uh, rises. Other artists like Breland, Shy Carter, I mean, they're making their marks too. But what is it about how megastar Beyonce now is making her mark in, in this way, getting so much buzz? How do you see it as whether it's elevating or expanding the arena. I mean, what do you see happening right now to kind of underscore your comment as this being one of the biggest weekends and of great importance to country music, culturally to America? Well, one, she is teaching us, educating us as she entertains about what country is. She's even challenging the idea of what is genre, both its limits and its realities, because this album is an education in the definition of what is country, even as it defies the definition it establishes. Mm. But the whole history of country, um, you know, I think of a first family of, of country, D. Fort Bailey, Lil Hardin Armstrong, whose genius child is Ray Charles. In 1962, 63, Ray Charles lets out modern sounds in country and Western music. This is an album that deconstructs and reconstructs what country can be. He's coming from R&B and jazz. Here is Beyonce coming from outside of the genre, honoring all the ancestors, the cowboy music, the films that inspired the genre honoring Dolly Parton, Willie Nelson, but introducing all these great new artists from Rhiannon Giddens to Tanner Adele to Raina Roberts. She has established a new country canon, wow. but she has mastered, and I hate to even use that word, she has she has mastered and ended mastery and beyonce the genre. Mm -hmm. She is having a new word for excellence and expertise is to Beyonce. Oh, that's beautiful. Uh, I mean, I love that you also say, you know, she, this is a moment of deconstructing and reconstructing. And, and probably for a very long time, people kind of felt like, you know, well, with any genre of music, they feel like it's default. It, it, everyone has a universal definition of what it is. And your comment saying this is reconstructing, deconstructing, I mean, clearly it, it's a broadening of the definition. It's an education, uh, an educational journey into what country music is, has been, continues to be, I mean, what American music is, right? 
and where black people are living in this country and what America is. She's helping America better understand country music and also better understand the wealth of who can be and is an American. The great Alice Randall, thank you so much. What a great pleasure to have you with us. Thank you so much. Wonderful to celebrate you with you this weekend. Oh, wonderful. And happy Easter. Thank you.